Hi everybody, welcome to Archie Marathon. What what do we do again at Archie Marathon? We're meant to be travelling, we can't travel, we're in lockdown. Where am I? The pit of despair. Don't even think <coughs> Don't even think about trying to escape. Alright, so what is Archie Marathon about? Learn to see architecture and see to learn architecture. Like what does that mean? So I guess we live in an age where you can download anything, you can access a building and get all of the hero shots of it. Um, you can go visit it and collect photos of it. I think we're all guilty of that, going to see something that we were a fan of and you just collect yourself in front of it, or the hero shots. Um, I think that's already a, a step up there though. I think a lot of people just want to be armchair critics. So before the Google machines, how did you start to research buildings? Well, we went to libraries, didn't we, Andrew? We we had, yeah. They have um, these things called thought. books. Yeah, boys, looking at books. Oh, no, no, mate, no, no, definitely not Just looking at on, any books, on, mate. mate. Yes, we are. Yes, we are looking at books. Yes, we are. Yeah, yeah and you realise there's only so many published images, and uh, but they had pretty good drawings, right? So we study them, like we're trying to work out what the hell is going on, why. Are these pictures so important? And then there's the whole sequenced procession of how you actually move through the spaces to enter the building. What happens when you're out after that? What happens after that? You don't really get that uh, sense of that even in the published images. So you do really need to study the plans and the sections and the drawings and looking back and try to relate back to the photos as much as you can do. Mm. Are you pulling your faces now? I'm I'm trying not to put you off anymore. I've had my fun. So this is a little project in Colombia that I usually show people. It's a beautiful little project. I've never been to South America. Um, and excuse my pronunciation, it's Posión Cula de la Milagrosa Chapel by Daniel Bonilla Arquitectos. It's outside of uh, Bogota, I think. These are direct images from Art Daily. So these are the published images. So you can see this uh, chapel has got stone, it's got this sliding screen. So you've got the two sort of bookends uh, stone parts and then this sliding screen uh, timber part that goes in the middle. So you know you've got a shot of one of the bell towers or one of the towers behind the altar. You can see the other end has the little bell so you've got to be quite investigative in, in, in critically looking at what you're looking at. Again, the two bookends and the taller bit. So you know the taller bit is probably the most important. That's the back of the altar. And what happens is that this thing slides. It has water on one side, parallel to it, and it seems to have a timber deck on the other side. And it sits on the side of a hill. And these are the plans. And what happens is the building that screen can slide and so suddenly it opens out and have a different configuration. So the diagram says it's a Roman basilica plan, so you've got a sort of cross form, so you've got normal chapel, normal linear chapel. But by sliding it open, you can see the little crucifix in the plan in the shadow, yeah? To just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah? Yep. And that, suddenly when that slides open, uh, the people on the hill goes through the chapel and that, uh, that crucifix becomes the the altar so it's, there's a new open chapel for an outdoor mass as seen in that diagram down the bottom yeah okay and and so the um the water becomes a termination of that space and everything gets op orientated back up the hill yeah and it and it crosses i think it's either on the water or next to it let's have a good uh yeah there it is the cross you can just see there and the bottom picture there oh, yeah. But what's, uh, what's interesting is, is to look at the plan and try to put yourself through it, right? So this is the only plan there is. So it has the volume uh, and, and the volume has the two stone ends. And then you have got the part that is always undercover there. And then you've got the box, the sliding screen and the sliding screen part, which is the congregation, that can slide depending on um, whether it's open or closed. 
So that slides open and moves over to the sort of the outdoor space, and then it opens out in the other direction. So do you uh, arrive? You go up towards the chapel there. You do go up the hill, yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. So we go back to pictures. That's up the hill, looking through to the other cross. You can barely see it across in that picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see it across there. This is the the part that slid open. So now it's got the open. Uh, transept whereas uh, the other picture there the interior shots it's actually when it's closed so you actually it's internalized experience I think it does have glass yeah you can see the stained glass there on the yeah but I'm assuming the stained glass is fixed could be wrong it's fixed but it slides no but it slides with the screen mm. okay and you can see the elevation how it slides open section even the little gap there behind the priests letting natural light through yeah because you get the texture of the light through the stone or bouncing on the stone so you get the texture and similar to a past one of our past episodes you also let that object continue and be independent instead of being cut in half so you understand that, that well, object yeah. keeps going from internal from the internal space so it seems that there's some kind of pond on the uh, right side there which is number 11 in this in the plan again you can see that there mm -hmm. but what's interesting is you, you can imagine going up the steps and you know the steps are also on an angle already or the they sort of test laid on a on an angle mm -hmm. and i think it's quite clever if you think about the geometry of the stairs themselves they're very intentional apart from the fact that they serpentine up the <laughs> hill to serpentine serpentine everyone serpentine we're not doing that again so yeah. So apart from negotiating the, the slope, if you notice the angle, that angle, the stair, kind of gives you and lines up to the landing up the top just before the step over the water. And then further to that, the angle of the, the uh, switchback landing there as well, you can see the angle of the treads, again, that points you to the cross. And then you switch direction and you move back. And then once you move back, at the top there, you've got this view over the pond. Yep. I don't know any of this. I just looked at it and guessed it because it seems there's some kind of movement in geometry that if it's a skilled architect, it wouldn't be arbitrary. So it's, it's clearly a, uh, uh, an attempt to provide some kind of experience. Yeah, but they could have just kept those steps going straight up to number two. They could have. They could have just kept going up, but they've decided they would bring people up, reference where you need to go, and then bring them over to the cross, give them a chance to do their Hail Marys and their high fives, and then head back over to the entry again. And then on top of that landing, you've got, you've got the water, but you bridge over, you step over the water. So traditionally in many religious buildings, uh, water is a symbol for cleansing. So from many cultures, from uh, obviously Christian with uh, water, you've got Muslims with the uh, ablution, as well as uh, the Japanese as well. Again, many cultures um, with the idea of cleansing. So in this case, you step over the water as a, as a sort of cleansing, and it's also as a threshold. You mm. step over and you land on top, you know, on the actual decking material, number two there. And then you have to that's walk lovely, around this wall. That stepping over the water is a, a lovely way of sort of saying to people, leave everything behind. We're going to go into this other space. It makes me think of Elaine de Botton's religion for atheists and that idea that once a week getting together and putting aside all of your concerns of the week and then asking yourself some bigger questions as part of the community about the meaning of life is probably something that we could use a bit more of. And it's lovely that water gesture. Okay, you've, you know why we're here? Now arrive, but you've got to leave those other things behind and concentrate on bigger questions. And it's done through architecture. Are you ready for this, uh, be afraid? Yeah. Peanut butter porter. Yeah. It's not as gross as it sounds. I bought it thinking, you're gonna have, you're gonna hate this, Andrew. But um, it's not terrible. It's dehydrated people. Anyway, so after you stepped over the water, you can see there's a glimpse through the gap, the slit, which is actually where the bell is mounted. But you just get a glimpse of the entry. You see it's directly in line with the 
number four entry, but then you, you have to walk around. But by walking around the wall, you get a glimpse of this tree that's at the end of this uh, walkway. So the walkway didn't have to go all the way along there, but I think it's definitely making a, a reference connection to that tree. And then you turn around and you go diagonally across to the entry, the door number four. Yes, the, the chapel is symmetrical in a sort of classical way. Uh, and that's the entry. Yeah, the entry is directly linked to that slit. So when you come back out, you're actually looking through that slit as well. So it's implied a landscape beyond that and behind there as well. And then coming back the other direction, you, you're looking up seemingly a growth of trees over there, according to the drawing. And then also, of course, over there, you look over the pond. Uh, and then these are nodal points where there is sort of shift in directions, which are quite important. But that's pretty much this building in its uh, in a nutshell. It, it, but it's really simple thing, but with amazing set of experiences, which is actually not so much in the pictures. Like the stairs, that, that journey is not really there unless you really look into it. But yeah. I don't even see pictures of the stairs. That's the thing. You can convince yourself that even videos and, uh, and pictures can tell you what a building's about. What's really important about this, and you just see so many professionals and students fall into it, is they want to prove how clever they are so they make things unnecessarily complex. This suggests a simplicity but proves that within that basic set of rules there is a vast complexity transition, layering, um, blurring of inside and outside, differing social spaces and connections and landscape in what looks like a really simple plan that you could knock up quite quickly. You don't need to go through gymnastics to prove you're really clever and interesting architect. You can actually just be a very mature uh, person that empathises with the human condition and responds to it. But that, that's, that journey is an incredibly... Um, and a knowledgeable architect has created that journey for a whole co a whole community to experience once a week. And nowadays, being at the world of internet, we have so much more information. Remember how oh, impossible yeah. it was to find things in the past? We now yeah. just type and Google your name and suddenly it gives you a pin where it is and tells you the, how, what transport to take to get there. Yeah, exactly. It takes about an hour, uh, depending on traffic, from downtown... Bogota would also know that the Eucharist is every last Saturday of the month at 4 p.m. So if you want to go there, make sure it's your time, your trip to be there on a Saturday, last Saturday of the month for 4 p.m. If you want to see it, because a lot of times, sometimes these things are quite closed. I think looking at uh, some pictures, it looks like some country road. If you look at the street view, so there's a gate there. You know, you can you can visit it virtually, so you can barely see it. I think mm. I don't think you can even see it because I think it's just a it's a dirt road. Hmm. Yeah. So now we've got extra pictures from you know generous people taking photos. Now you can mm. see that deck, you can see the transition material, you can see that bell. Um, you know, this wouldn't have been wouldn't have been possible. But I think you do need to be quite investigative. You can yeah. even see the roof in this one. Yeah, you can see that slit you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Skylights, the pathway. It reminds me of um, both like Japanese traditional homes, smaller lots, but how to make it feel bigger. So you actually have stepping stones that force you to slow down. Um, you reveal where you're going to, but then you take them on a journey. The same happens through um, uh, traditional Chinese gardens as well, where you can see where you're going to. It's framed often with a you know, a moon gate or something like that, and but you're taken off another direction and then back again. Um, yeah. Such sophisticated... Like, imagine just that process of stepping into the stone in the middle of the water and then stepping out again. It forces you to consider what you're doing and to slow down. But, yeah, look at look this. Looks like the looks like the tree's gone. Ah, It's just okay. some bush now. Yeah, yeah, the drawing had a tree there, so... Yeah. It would have been a stronger element having this pathway that just ducks past the tree. That would have been quite nice. The other great thing about doing Araki marathons is we also, you get, you have these wonderful sessions like, I wouldn't have put a light there. Look at the light hanging off the side of that wall. Look at um, 
the size of that flashing, I probably would have detailed it this way. So you get to really scrutinize a building. Sometimes it sounds negative, but it's more about um, realizing how hard it is to build buildings, but the types of ways you would deal with something. Even that framing, the horizontal slot with the, with the same slot that probably lines up with the entry in the bell tower. And then when yeah, you go it through, does. it becomes a horizontal slot and just captures a little bit of outdoor space. It's very deliberate. And, and the, mm. the breaking of symmetry is incredible. Like it's an incredibly symmetrical building. Like even the way the pews are set out, like it looks like the pews come to the, to the middle and then you're offset slowly. Um, yeah, and then proportions, you know, that is a perfect square. Yeah, so much thought. And then that is, and that is two squares. You know, that's, that's one square there, two squares, one by two ratio, that's, it's all. Yeah, again, the more you look, the more you look, the more you realize, you know, like good work, the more you look, the more things you dig into and you go, wow, I, I didn't know, I didn't see that. And this is part of the conversations as well, having someone to bounce off and say, did you notice that? And go, yeah, wow, I didn't, didn't yeah. see that. And disagreeing about things is so much fun when you visit something. You know, oh, I would have done that. What are you talking about? That works really well in that way. And you get to really debate things um, when you're out on a tour, an archie tour. Yeah, so that's all I have this week. Um, but I think it's a, a good little project to talk about. I'd love to go see it though. All right, everybody. So that is actually a lot like what an Archie Marathon tour is like. Um, and once we get the hell out of lockdown and get a vi certain virus behind us, we'll be um, heading out into the wild and looking at some awesome buildings. I hope you can join us. Let us know what, uh, how you look at buildings, how you research buildings. Let us know of buildings that belie their apparent simplicity that have so much more complexity. Have you ever studied plans and tried to work out how you move through a building? Well, I know that uh, I used to run the studio exactly forcing students to do that. And we had final year students who have never done that before. Don't blame them, but you know, things we take for granted as us, um, it's not always taught. No, no, it feels like, you know, as a profession in our urgency to be, to out clever each other, there seems to be a lot of the fundamentals that aren't being taught uh, at university. We'll try to fix that. One YouTube video at a time. It's time to get more penis butter into me. Like, comment, subscribe. And check out Patreon. In the links below. Bye. See you, everybody. Adios. Oh. Uh, someone called the ambulance. Andrew? I'm Hello? okay. I'm okay. <laughs>